Hello and welcome to this session in which we'll keep on discussing the elements of the contract. To have an enforceable legal contract, we have to have certain elements, specifically three, and those are offer and acceptance, an offer by the offerer, the person that's making the offer, and it has to be accepted by someone else, the offeree. And basically, this gives us mutual assent, basically mutual agreement between the two parties. We have to have an exchange of value or an exchange of consideration between the offerer and the offeree. The person that's making the offer is getting something and the person receiving the service or accepting the offer is getting something in return as well. And we talked about exchange of value and a separate recording. And the third element is no defense. And basically this state that for the court to enforce the contract, to be an enforceable contract, there should not be a reason not to do it. You know, sometime maybe the, the contract could be a, 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 for, an illegal, for an illegal merchandise, then the court will not enforce it. And we'll talk about no defense in, fu in, in, in future recordings. Specifically in this session, I'm going to be focusing on one aspect of the three elements, and that's the acceptance element. Because when the offerer make an offer, the offeree will have to accept. Now, there are specific rules for acceptance, and this is what we will discuss in this session, just like we discussed in a prior session, the termination, the rejection of, of an offer. Here we're going to look at acceptance. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. In contract law, the concept of acceptance refers to the offeree agreeing. Simply put, accepting. I accept what you're, what you're offering, the terms of the offer. And this is how we create a contract, because we need someone proposing and the other party accepting. Now, how can you accept this? You can accept it in writing, but you don't have to. The acceptance don't have to be in writing. Nonverbal actions like nodding is acceptable. Gavel falling in an auction can also signify acceptance. So it doesn't have to be in writing. Now, it's better if it's in writing. It's easier for the court to interpret. But otherwise, other form of acceptance is acceptable. Who can accept? The person, the party to whom the offer is made, has the right to accept it. Offers cannot be transferred to someone else unless it's an option contract. And we talked about option contract in the prior recording. And basically, what's an option contract is an offerer make an offer and they tell you, I'm going to hold it for 30 days. Well, they don't have to hold it for 30 days unless you do what? Unless you pay them something, give them some consideration to hold it. That consideration is an option contract. If there's an option contract, then that option contract can be transferred to a third party if you have that option contract. How can you accept method of acceptance? Usually, usually, acceptance can be done in any reasonable way given the circumstances like replying by letter, email, a telephone. However, if the person making the offer, the offerer, specifies a particular method, so they'll tell you exactly how they want you to respond then that specified method must be used. If they want you to email them, you have to email them. If they want a certified mail, you have to send it certified mail. If they say, I accept by fax, then you have to fax it. Acceptance through a different method may be considered a counter offer. What does that mean? It means you did not really accept. The old offer is gone. Now you are making the offer. So if they ask you, please respond by email, you need to respond by email. This is the method of acceptance. Then we have something called, called the mirror image rule. We need to be familiar with that when it comes to acceptance. Acceptance must be clear and ambiguous, closely matching the terms of the offer. You know, when you stand in front of the mirror, it shows you as you, no modification, no changes. This is known as the mirror image rule. If the acceptance alters, changes, add terms, it's no longer an acceptance, it's a counter offer. So when you accept, 
you're accepting as is, which effectively, if you make any changes, you are rejecting the original offer. This is what the mirror image rule. It's exactly what they're offering, and you are accepting exactly what they're offering. Then we have the mailbox rule. Unlike revocation, which are effective when received, revocation are effective when received, acceptance are generally effective upon dispatch. What is dispatch? Dispatch is when you send the mail, when you dispatch the mail. When you put the mail in the mailbox to send it, that's a dispatch. When you click on the send button in your email, that's a dispatch. On your fax machine, when you click on that send, no one uses faxes, but just in case that's the case, or no one even uses mail anymore. That's the dispatch time. As long as they are correctly addressed, upon dispatched, acceptance is takes effective. This is known as the mailbox rule. It does not matter if the acceptance gets lost or delayed. It's considered effective once sent. So once you click on that send button, you accept it. For example, if Anna offers to sell her car to Bob for $5,000, Bob emails his acceptance. The contract is for the moment Bob click on that sends button, not when Anna receives it. It may take two days until Anna opens her email. She can't change her mind anymore once Bob sends that email says, I accept. If Bob had suggested paying 4,800 instead, guess what? That's a counter offer. There's no acceptance. But if Bob agrees to the price, agrees to the term, click on send, we have a contract. More about the mailbox rule. On March 10th, Elise sends Chris an email offering to sell her vintage piano for 3,000. Chris decides to accept the offer and mails a letter of acceptance on March the 15th. So two days, uh, five, day, five days later, he mails the letter. However, the following day, March the 16th, before arriving, before the letter arriving, Elise changes her mind. And she sends Chris an email saying, look, I'm no longer selling my vintage piano. Okay. Chris's acceptance letter arrived in Elise's mailbox on March the 17th. Do we have a valid contract here? Do we have a valid, con valid contract? And the answer is yes. Why? Because when Chris sends that letter on March the 15th, when he dispatched the letter, that's it. Elise can no longer wiggle herself out of this offer because acceptance is upon dispatch. In this case, a contract was formed on March 15th, the day Chris dispatched the letter accepting the offer. Elise's attempt to revoke the offer is ineffective because it came after Chris has already sent his acceptance. So the date Elise receives the acceptance is irrelevant on the 17th. It's irrelevant. The, the contract was formed on March the 15th. So under the mailbox rule, the contract was validly formed when Chris sends his acceptance, even if the letter had been delayed or lost in transit. Method of communication, how, communi how can you communicate your acceptance? Well, in contract law, the method of communication can affect when an acceptance becomes effective, especially under the mailbox rule. So specified method of communication, if a person making the offer, which they have the right to, specifies a certain method for sending acceptance. Now, if the person, if we go back here to this example, now, now Elise can, can, she can specify that I don't accept until I receive your offer method of communication in contract law the method of communication for accepting an offer can affect when acceptance becomes effective especially under the mailbox rule as we saw so if a person making the offer the offerer specifies a certain method for sending acceptance then an acceptance sent using that specified method is effective when it's dispatched so if they told you we want to send it in the mail well once i place it in the mail in the absence of any specific instruction it's accepted if no specific method stated, if the offerer does not specify how to communicate the acceptance, then the offeree can use any reasonable means to accept. In this case, the acceptance is effective also upon dispatch, regardless of the method used. This means if an offer is made verbally or in writing without specific method for acceptance, the offeree can accept it through a reasonable method like a letter, mail, or fax, and the acceptance is effective upon sent, upon dispatch. Can you opt out, the, out, opt out of this mailbox rule? And the answer is yes. The person making the offer 
can be more specific. The offeror have the option, because it's their offer, has the option to explicitly state in the offer that acceptance must be received to be effective. If that's in the offer, then you're opting out of the mailbox. It means I am not going to accept until I receive. It's not when you, when you dispatch it, it's when I receive it. This is essentially opting out of the mailbox rule. In those scenarios, the acceptance need to be received by the offerer before it's considered effective. If the offerer includes a statement like acceptance is only valid upon receipt, then the contract is formed when the offerer actually receives the acceptance. So if we go back to this example here, and Elise stated that I only accept the offer upon receipts and she sends the revocation on March the 16th and Chris receives the revocation before she receives the acceptance, then guess what? We, we don't have a contract. So you can opt out, but you have to make that clear in the offer because the offerer can attach any condition to their offer. They can attach any condition. So on July 15th, Emma offers to sell her bicycle to Tom for $200. She sends him a text message. Great. She specified in her message that any acceptance must be received by her no later than July 17th. So that's the deal. I want an answer by July 17th, 12 p.m. Tom decides to accept the offer and sends a letter through standard mail on July 16th. Now, when would Emma accept? When she receives it. And she has to receive it by July 17th, 12 p.m. Due to postal delays, Emma does not receive Tom's letter until July 18th. That's it. That let that offer is gone, expired. Okay. In this case, there is no enforceable contract between Emma and Tom. Even though Tom sent his acceptance within the time frame Emma specified, she had clearly stated that the acceptance needed to be received by a specific time. She can you can put that. Simply put, opt in out of the mailbox rule. So since Emma received the acceptance after the deadline, the mailbox rule does not apply and the contract is not formed due to late acceptance. Let's take a look at this multiple choice questions from farhatlectures.com. What does the mailbox rule state regarding contract acceptance? Well, let's see. Acceptance is effective when the offeree what? Receives it? Receive what? Receive the offer? Is that is that is that the mailbox rule? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Receives receives what? There's not even clear. Receive the offer? That's not when acceptance takes place. Is it acceptance is effective upon dispatch? Is this what the mailbox rule is? I would say yes. The mailbox rule state that as soon as you dispatch your answer, your acceptance of the offer acceptance is effective it be, you have a you, you form the contract because you need an offer and acceptance as soon as you dispatch the acceptance you have a valid contract you accepted the other person did not receive it yet but under the mailbox room mailbox rule upon dispatch i would say b is a good answer actually a perfect definition is it c acceptance is only valid if confirmed by the offerer the the offerer don't can don't confirm it once you accept and you accept the terms, that's it, you have a valid contract. They don't need to confirm it. Acceptance is effective when the offerer reads it. No. Once you dispatch, as long as you not, you're not making a counter offer, as long as you are not altering or changing the terms of the agreement, guess what? Under the mailbox rule, you have a mailbox rule. I keep saying rule. The mailbox rule, you have a valid contract. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures? look at additional MCQs that's going to help you whether you are a CPA exam candidate or an accounting student taking business law courses studying for your CPA exam invest in yourself invest in your career good luck study hard and of course stay safe